Welcome to WXTV, your online source for weatherization training. This is the first installment of our mobile home series. As a kickoff, we'll talk with Cal Steiner, one of the key figures in mobile home weatherization. He'll share with us his advice on attic, wall, and belly insulation as an introduction to the techniques that we'll cover in later episodes. Good afternoon. I, my name is Cal Steiner. I'm with the Department of Commerce of the state of North Dakota. We're here in uh, sunny North Dakota uh, watching the crews do some work on mobile homes and we're going to try and learn uh, their techniques of what they've learned over the last 10-15 years. Uh, we're going to show you uh, several techniques of insulating the attics, walls, belly, and ductwork, and also patching methods on these mobile homes. Uh, the techniques have been developed, like I said, over about the last 10 to 15 years. They've been proven and tried and will work if you follow the uh, uh, procedures that they're going to be showing you. What we're going to talk about is, is what is mobile home weatherization? There's really four components to the insulation of mobile homes. And the first portion of this is a correct, accurate audit that includes uh, the correct pre-R value, correct post-R value, the correct amount of materials, and the correct labor costs. So number one, we want a correct audit that will give you the amount of bags that goes into either the attic, walls, or, or belly. The second thing we look at is the um, access into a wall, belly, or the attic. Uh, the access points uh, can be uh, on the roof, from the side, from inside. On walls, they can be uh, from underneath, uh, from the belly. We can go from the ends, from the sides, and from underneath. Now, we either drill an access hole, cut an access hole, but somehow we gain access to a cavity. The third thing we look at is the... Um, the uh, putting insulation into the cavity in a cost-effective, efficient manner. And what that means is we want a density of about 1.5 to 1.6 pounds per cubic foot, and we also want to do it in a time frame where it doesn't cost a lot to do. We want to run as much insulation through our hoses as possible to reduce the amount of uh, labor time on this home. The last thing we really look at is sealing up our access point so it looks right, it looks nice, and it doesn't leak water. Right now we're just doing our initial blower door test and during that test uh, what we do is we walk around the mobile home and we uh, basically look for areas in the mobile home where insulation can get into the mobile home. At this point we aren't so much worried about air sealing techniques uh, we just want to make sure that we don't fill up furnace closets or uh, underneath bathroom sinks and that. That's where some of the bigger holes are. Uh, what we found is that during our insulation techniques, we do get a considerable amount of reduction in air sealing. So we do not do any air sealing until all of our techniques are done, attic, walls, and belly. So once again, right now, all we're really looking for is a couple points where insulation would get into the mobile home while we are insulating. Uh, some of the more common penetrations where you're going to find uh, uh, insulation being able to get into the structure is this collar right up here many times is missing and there's a gaping hole up there. So that should actually be fixed before uh, you insulate the attic. Another common entry point where insulation when you're blowing the belly is, is going to come up is right behind the dryer. Uh, Many times there's a, quite a large hole cut and insulation will start filling up the cavity in the back there. In some instances beneath the sinks and uh, around the bathtub, uh, they go right into the water heater closet and uh, they'll go down into the belly. And sometimes there's square feet of hole or so that goes down into the belly there. So check underneath your sink and by your bathtub uh, where it goes into the uh, water heater closet. We're going to talk a little bit about what type of densities we put in the attics and the bellies and the walls and, and a little bit about the technique here. Uh, 
the audit should be predicting that if the correct information was put into the audit. And the density we're looking at is about 1.5 to 1.6 pounds per cubic foot of fiberglass. We do not use cellulose uh, because of the uh, high density we would have to put it in uh, to get it past settled density. So we only use fiberglass insulation. And at a density of 1.5 to 1.6 pounds, fiberglass has roughly an R4 per inch. And so uh, we get a real nice R value and we get it dense enough where air movement does not pass through it very readily. Now that's in the attics, uh, we calculate that density. And also in the bellies, in the wings and in the ends of the trailer house should all be dense packed to roughly 1.5, 1.6. And in the center of the uh, belly, we should be loose filling it uh, and roughly put about six inches or so into the, into the belly portion of it, the hanging part of the belly. Uh, we don't want to fill that up uh, because we run the risk of isolating our water lines from the heat uh, and freezing it. The other point is we don't want to put too much in there because it actually becomes uh, a point of diminishing returns after a while. Uh, some of these bellies may take up to 50, 60 bags if we would fill it completely, and it's just not necessary. We want to put in an R value of about uh, uh, 20 uh, to 30 in that belly. But the main thing is here we want to do what we call perimeter blow, where the perimeter of the entire mobile home in the belly is at a density of 1.5 to 1.6 pounds. So once the audit predicts how many bags a belly or an attic will take, it's up to the crew to install it according to uh, the amount of bags that was predicted. So how do they do that? Uh, let, let's say this mobile home attic, uh, the estimate uh, came out to be 20 bags. Uh, so the crew would insulate roughly one fourth of the attic. At that point, they would shut it down and they go ask the guy that's filling the bags in the hopper, how many bags have we went through? And they should be roughly one-fourth through. Now, the fellow putting the insulation in the bags, he should also know that one-fourth of the bags equals, uh, in this situation, about five bags. So when he's at five bags, he should shut it down and go out and talk to the, uh, the person that's doing the installing. Uh, if they put in two bags, that means they need to up that density a little bit. If they've already put in five or six bags, they have way too much density in there. So uh, it, it takes some talking back and forth before the person that's actually doing the installing should be talking to the person putting the bags in the hopper. Uh, they should keep track. And when you're done with this mobile, you should be very close to what was predicted if you're talking back and forth and using your machine uh, and your technique properly to get the proper density in. Well, that's it for another episode of WXTV. And remember, this was just an introduction. To see the specific techniques for attic wall and belly insulation, check out the other episodes in our mobile home series. And thanks for watching. WXTV, your online source for weatherization information, techniques, and expert advice.